Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azurautomation.com and today we are going to check out how Parallel Desktop Tech Preview build for Mac powered by Apple Silicon M1 chip is working and is it ready to try out all Windows 10 softwares in it, especially the one we use for development of softwares and testing of the softwares in our day-to-day -day life. After installing Parallel Desktop, I guess I released a video two days before, I have been using this Windows 10 for ARM-based operating system for almost couple of days now and I'm going to share my thoughts on the software which will work on Windows 10 installed in Parallels and how the software is, is going to behave and what are the softwares which are not working at the moment. I mostly use some of the commonly used software in my Dell XPS which is full-blown 64-bit Windows 10 professional edition and some of the softwares are like Visual Studio since the experience in Visual Studio in Windows is much better than Visual Studio for Mac and especially the software testing plugins that I use like Specflow, NUnit, MSTest, those are pretty better in Windows. Similarly, the SQL Server Management Studio and the SQL Server I use in Windows. Similarly, Camtasia, because Camtasia at the moment in Apple M1 is not fully supported and I always use my Windows to do the exporting of videos and encoding of videos and it produce less sized footprint of video. Similarly, I use Docker for Windows container because it's not always Linux container that I use. So for Windows container, I use my Windows 10 Pro and IntelliJ IDE. Visual Studio Code, I mean both these softwares are already running fine in Mac. I'm just using it for my productivity in Windows 10. Similarly, PowerShell and some of the Azure related commands I use in Windows 10. So these are some of the software that I use mostly in Dell XPS which has full 64-bit Windows 10 professional running. I'm going to see if these softwares can run in my Windows 10 ARM-based operating system which is running inside Parallels desktop. I have installed all the above software already in my Windows 10 ARM based OS and there are some software which will not run in Windows 10 due to its nature of architecture as the softwares are not ready yet to support Windows 10 ARM and it has nothing to do with the parallels itself because parallels at the moment due to its restriction it only supports Windows 10 ARM based operating system but not the x86 or 64 bit operating system at the moment but I guess hopefully after holidays Parallels is going to support them all, but yes, that's what it's going to be like that at the moment. So let's quickly jump into the Parallel Desktop in Mac and we'll see how it actually works in Parallel Desktop for Mac. So I'm just going to open my Windows 10 Professional, so I'm going to start it for the first time. While it is starting, I'm also going to show my activity monitor like before uh, starting of the Windows 10, actually the size it was using, the memory it was using is like 6 GB approximately. But once I opened the Parallels Desktop, the size is actually like 10.89 GB, something like that. So what we can do is like just to see it more realistically, uh, I'm just going to do a shutdown once again because we cannot just close the Parallels Desktop. And I'm also going to quit the Parallels Desktop here. And you can see that the size at the moment is like 6.75 GB. I think some of the uh, software process has been opened because I opened the Parallel Desktop already. But realistically, it's around 5.8 GB or something like that. But once I open the Parallel Desktop, it's going to open or occupy almost like 5 GB of viewers. So that's how the nature of it uh, on the RAM side. So I'm just going to open the Windows 10 once again. And then I'm just going to expand or make the full Windows 10 in the full screen so that we can see things more clearly. And now I'm just going to show you the software which I have already installed within Windows 10 ARM based operating system at the moment. So you can see that it is quite faster like how we saw in our earlier video it is very, very faster. And I have installed Visual Studio over here. So you can see this is the Visual Studio code which is already installed on the uh, Windows 10 which is running on the ARM based operating system and it is running fine without any problem and I also installed Chrome which is also running fine on the Windows 10 for the ARM based operating system which is also pretty cool so I could able to uh, do a Google with Google search uh, which is all good and I can also open the IntelliJ IDE Community Edition which is also running fine without any problem. And as you can see that the IntelliJ IDE is coming up, which is all good. Uh, and these are the softwares which I use most commonly on uh, Windows 10 in my Dell XPS, as I was talking about. And then I'm going to open the PowerShell, and PowerShell experience is pretty fine without any problem. So this is pretty good. But the most commonly used software, which I mostly use, is like Docker for Windows. Uh, 
and uh, the Visual Studio and Camtasia and things of that nature. So if I just see the uh, Docker uh, setup, you could see that I have already downloaded the Docker desktop installer. But once I tried running it, it will say that the application has failed to start because its side-by-side -side configuration is incorrect. Please see the application event log or use the command line this for the stack trace information for more detail. So it looks like the Docker desktop installer is not available or ready to run at the moment on the ARM based architecture of Windows 10. And I just searched for uh, the Docker desktop for Windows 10 ARM. And you can see that there is no support yet available. So it's very sad to see that uh, it's been almost like a year Windows 10 ARM based Surface Pro X was released, uh, but still there is no support for Docker desktop on this particular uh, operating system, which is pretty bad and pretty sad to see uh, how it is. But Mac, like M1 is released just like a month before, but already the Docker desktop for Mac that too powered by M1 is already supported, which is really, really sad on the Windows side. So you can see that the Docker is not running, so I cannot use the Windows container, that too on the ARM. I don't even know whether the Windows container can run on an ARM processor. I guess it will run, but I'm not 100% sure unless until I can see that. And similarly, I also installed the Visual Studio, full blown Visual Studio on this particular uh, operating system. You can see that this is the Visual Studio uh, 2019. So if I open that, it is working fine as well. So you can see that the performance of all these applications which I am opening, like almost three applications I opened, and all the applications are opening pretty fine. There is no lag at the moment. So all these are working as expected, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I'm just gonna see how the uh, project can be created and if I could be able to run any small test or something like that. So I'm just gonna create a new project and you can see that it's bringing up the project template. So I'm just gonna write a simple console-based application and I'm gonna call this as a hello world program, which mostly people do. And I'm just gonna hit create. Uh, and you can see that we are using the .NET Core 3.1 this time to create an application. I'm not using the .NET 5 at the moment. I'm just gonna use the .NET Core. So I could see that creating the project is taking a bit of time. Maybe this is the first time I'm using Visual Studio on this Windows 10. Maybe it's doing some sort of uh, configuration, some stuff. And I'm getting a message saying, Palette Desktop would like to access the files or network volumes. Do you want to access that? I'm gonna just hit okay because this is just Paddles, not too much fuzzy or worried about it. And now I'm just going to start running the uh, project and you can see that this is the full blown uh, Visual Studio and now if I try uh, running the hello world program I should see a console coming up you can see that the dependencies are, are already resolved and you can see that the console is coming up with the hello world over here so which means the Visual Studio is working fine without any problem I'm actually gonna do a lot of research on the Visual Studio like how it works with the spec flow selenium and other software which I most commonly use for automation testing I'm gonna release those videos separately but in this video we are fully focused on all the softwares which are actually running fine without any problem or not so docker at the moment is not running so that is the one software which we saw it is not working fine and the other software is the Camtasia so if I just open the Camtasia installer, it looks like it is opening uh, to show me the language and stuff. And if I hit OK, you can see that it shows me that Camtasia 2020 requires a 64-bit operating system and the installation cannot continue. So this is very bad. I mean, this restricts us to do any sort of uh, installation of Camtasia on this particular Windows 10. I mean, I don't really require Camtasia in this Windows at least, because uh, if I do recording on my Mac, I could still share my screen from my Windows, so it shouldn't be a problem. But if I want to do an exporting of the videos which I uh, try recording in my Mac, the size of video, if I do an export from Mac, the size is very big because of its encoder. But if I do in Windows, the size is very, very small, at least half the size of the video which I can create in Mac, which is really, really cool. But I could see that it is currently not supported. But hopefully once the parallel desktop starts supporting the x86 or x64 bit operating system, things will be all right. But I could see that all the software which I mostly use, except 
Docker desktop for Windows, uh, which is due to the nature of the operating system, and the Camtasia, which is also due to the nature of the operating system. I could use all other software without any problem. And you can see that after opening all these applications like uh, IntelliJ IDE and the Visual Studio and the Chrome browser, Visual Studio Code, uh, I could see that the memory usage, the RAM usage has now increased from uh, 10.6 to 11.4, like almost one GB more. And also I have not seen the Mac fan is running and the MacBook Pro is pretty silent still now. It is not warming up yet and it is very cool, which means uh, it's, it's really good. I mean, I have not seen a Mac while paddles to stop running and the fan is quiet. Never seen in my older MacBook Pro with, with early 2018 edition, but this one that do it is Mac M1 13 inch MacBook Pro and it is really, really fast and quite calm at the moment which is pretty cool. So these are the softwares which I could see that it is working fine without any problem. I also installed the uh, Edge browser and it looks like everything is working fine without any problem. So all these things are quite good at the moment uh, and they are pretty faster. So I think after opening all these applications and running all these softwares on Windows, the Mac M1 is looking pretty good. And I think once there is gonna be a new update it is definitely a replacement of Windows 10 Pro running on my Dell XPS. I'm probably not going to use Dell XPS anymore after having the whole software support in the PAL desktop. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video. Tell me about your thoughts and experiences if you are already using the M1 and what are the things that you need to see in the next video. We can probably talk about that. Thank you.